This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Good evening, and welcome to episode 20 of the Animaniacast. Darth Vader? No. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. No, let's try that again. <laughs> welcome. That was my Alfred Hitchcock impression. <laughs> let's try it again. I think it was the breathing at the end. Of I know, right? Good evening. No. Good evening. I welcome to... No, I can't even do it now. Here we go. I'm going to do it seriously. Here we go. Huh. Alfred Hitchcock impression. Go. Good evening. And welcome to episode 20 of the Animaniacast. That's my horrible Alfred Hitchcock impression. So it's not the episode. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And welcome to the Animani Cast, and I'm sorry for that horrible impression. We are a podcast that is dedicated to the animated television series Animaniacs. Each and every week, we revisit a different episode of the series in the order in which it was released, discussing all the cultural references, all the gags, and uh, we share our memories of when we first watched the episode and what we think about the episode right now. In the end, we give each and every episode a water tower rating and this one might get some high water towers by the way joining me once again is my brother nathan hi mom <laughs> and across the country in georgia is kelly hello hello well we are here and we're going to be discussing episode 20 today of animaniacs and this is a, a kind of an odd situation uh, let's start, first of all, with the release date. Nathan, when was this cartoon released. originally released? It was released on Monday, October 11th, 1993. Okay, so here's the issue that, that's kind of weird. On Netflix, it, mm -hmm. it shows this as episode 21. Yeah, so there's people that have watched 21 and now are getting mad at us right now. Yeah, well, no, as no. soon as we name the episode. But. <laughs> yes, but we're, we're actually discussing the episode 20. Well, on Netflix, it's episode 21, but this is episode 20. It has Hearts of Twilight and The Boyds. So two very cool. We, I feel I felt very much like a, a, a movie, you know, being a movie lover. Maybe not, you know, as much as I should be. A cinephile. A cinephile. There we go. Being a cinephile. Uh, I feel, well, at least I feel like a cinephile right now, right? Because mm. we have, we had uh, many different uh, things. We had uh, the opening, of course, was the Alfred Hitchcock kind of opening that yes. he would do in uh, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, where it show like a, a, what's the, the outline. profile, the mm. profile, the outline of his profile that he would walk into and say, good evening. There's my Alfred Hitchcock impression oh, okay. again. Uh, except this time they said Flamiel. And, of course, they said Citizen Caney right again, there yeah. at the end. So, Spoilers. so right from the beginning, <laughs> right from the beginning, we know that this is going to focus on movies, right? Especially Alfred Hitchcock in one particular one. Um, guys, what do we think about this episode in a couple, just a few words? Kelly, what about you? What do you think? For in Laven. For in Laven. <laughs> what? She has spoken for in Laven. <laughs> and Nathan, what about you? Oh, I love it. I'm just, uh, it's a classic. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get right into this thing right here. This is an episode that has two it kind of a, it parodies or salutes to movies. Uh, uh, one of them, which is uh, Apocalypse Now, and the other one is The Birds, of course. Let's get right into the first segment. Okay, segment number one was called Hearts of Twilight. It was written by Paul Rugg and directed by Alfred Jimeno. Kelly, this is one of your favorites, I know. Can, it is. Can you tell us a basic synopsis? What happens in Hearts of Twilight? The... Animaniacs have been summoned by the chairman Thaddeus Plotz 
to go and stop the director from making his movie. He's gone crazy. He's gone over budget. They've sent accountants over there to the studio to stop him, and they've, they've disappeared. They haven't returned. So it's up to the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister to, you know, delve deep into the, the heart of the studio yes. and f- find a way to get the director to stop making his movie. <laughs> And they, and they, of course, they have to find. They they help the director find an ending to this film. Yeah, because I guess that was the only problem we really had. He just couldn't find that ending. And the Warners, being such helpful, <laughs> helpful kids, <laughs> they help him out. They have a great idea. Very so. forcefully, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, this is a very a cool episode. It has, of course, many references to uh, the the movie Apocalypse Now, which. To be fair and honest, everybody, none of us have actually yeah, seen. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> but I did. I, I will say that I, I did pull up the movie last night, and I fast forwarded to key moments, and uh, I did see, you know, to get the you know reference points, which was cool to see. Uh, and I know Kelly, you've actually read the original book, right? Heart of Darkness. I did. I. I. I'm an English major. Yay. <laughs> so, um, when I was in college, I, I think it, I guess it was a British literature class. Mm-hmm. And uh, we read Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. And it wasn't until I read that in college. And I, I, don't, know, I don't know if it's the final line of the book, but one of the, the last lines of the book is the horror, the horror. And then it fu- <laughs> it's like this light bulb came on in my head. And I immediately I was like, Heart of darkness hearts of twilight the horror the, oh my goodness i finally made the connection <laughs> it took years and i i was like i understand the episode on a whole new level now i'm you know i was so excited it made my day very it, cool it just made everything everything in my life at that moment made sense <laughs> well let's get into depth of of what happens in this particular cartoon um as kelly mentioned uh the, it starts off with uh them kind of Theodore Plotz talking to um, what I'm Thaddeus. Was, Thaddeus. I'm sorry. I, you know what? This is a good point to point out. Mm-hmm. I have said Theodore Plotz in a different episode at least twice, and nobody corrected me. At least twice, and I was I listen- did silently. I oh silently my gosh! You, you gotta get in front. Thaddeus is such a weird name. I heard myself later in editing. I said Theodore Plotz, and then I said Theodore Plotz again. I'm like, no, it's not Theodore. It's Thaddeus. What's wrong with me? You should have just dubbed it over. Yeah, let's try this again. In fact, yes. Let's try this again. <laughs> Cut, take two, not editing this out. The- Thaddeus! Mm! Thaddeus Plots <laughs> is talking to a couple other executives, and he's showing this... Uh, he actually ends up showing a map to the Warners, right? Mm-hmm. About how they need to go from here to here to uh, stage 64, I believe it was. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to check that map and see if that's actually the Warner Brothers lot. And uh, it's a pretty rough, uh, est- it kind of looks like it. In fact, uh, they, so you could tell that they actually referenced the, the real map of the Warner Brothers studio. So that was cool to see. Um, in the original movie, uh, they're running over some of the, uh, uh, they, they're talking to, uh, oh, oh gosh, not Charlie Sheen, but his father is Martin Sheen. Uh-huh. Martin Sheen is in Apocalypse Now, and they're talking to him and uh, uh, about this uh, this general who's gone crazy in the jungle, and you, we need to go have you go out and uh, terminate him with extreme prejudice, is what they say. Um, I think in the original book, Kelly, didn't they say like he, he apparently didn't have to kill this guy, but capture him or something like that, right? I don't remember. It's been a really long time since I've read it. <laughs> okay. Well, in the in the um in the movie, they turn on this little tape recorder like we inter- intercepted this transmission. And on it, uh you hear Marlon Brando who plays uh the general that he's has to go after talking about this snail going across the straight a- straight edge oh. of a razor blade. This has been verified as Colonel Kurtz's voice. I watched a snail crawl along the edge of a straight razor. That's my dream. It's my nightmare. Crawling, slithering along 
the edge of a straight razor and surviving. So right away, we got the connection right there to uh, the, the Mr. Director, director yeah, talking about Ooey Gooey was his name. I saw a snail slithering across a railroad track. Ooey Gooey was his name. Oh, I ate a bug. Cut, cut. A bug I ate with little wings. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was a cool connection right there. By the way, um, the, one of the people that's actually talking to Martin Sheen in that scene uh, is Harrison Ford. And he plays his character's name is Lucas. So named after George Lucas. He actually picked the name huh. and uh, decided to call himself uh, Lucas right there. So I, I knew that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's actually... I'm such, I'm such a Star Wars nerd. I know, but it's actually <laughs> really cool because um, he he just looks like Indiana Jones in that. I mean, it's right before Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, he is Indiana Jones. It's, that's true. Yeah. Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. Let's make that very clear. <laughs> but he looks so much like Professor Jones in that. I think he's even wearing glasses in that scene and everything that I'm like, oh, my God, it looks like just Indiana Jones is talking about <laughs> in the same voice of talking about the Ark of the Covenant and everything. It's <laughs> it's very like meta. It's like, whoa, Indy. Your mission is to proceed up the Nung River in a Navy patrol boat. <clears throat> Pick up Colonel Kurtz's path at New Mung Ba. Follow it. Learn what you can along the way. When you find the colonel, infiltrate his team by <clears throat> whatever means available and terminate the colonel's command. So so they're talking to uh, the Warners in the, in the cartoon and about the same kind of situation. You have to go from here to here. Each one of the Warners has their specialty. Nathan, do you remember what the Warners specialties were? Yes. Um, Wacko was a specialty with a, a Hamlet. No, wait, no. wait, a hamlet? Hammer? <laughs> wait, a mallet. Mallet. I was like, a hammer and a mallet is a hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be. And uh, Dot was cu the cuteness. Yes. And Yakko, of course, had uh, two paddle balls at once. Yes, exactly. What a great talent that is. <laughs> yeah, I, it made me uh, want to do that, too. I... <laughs> it's impossible. I, I can't even do one paddle ball. Have you, Kelly, have you had any experience with paddle balls at all? It don't have... Yeah, but... but... Oh, yeah, a long time ago. I don't have the manual dexterity to do even one paddle ball. So Yakko, definitely a, a talent. I especially liked how Wacko, his talent was with the mallet. And he bashes this walnut yeah. and then eats the mallet. He eats the mallet. And I think the walnut, too, because the walnut's not on the table afterwards. So I think <laughs> it just eats everything. Well, he was very hungry in this particular episode. I mean, mm. he's even wanting to eat the, the donut, I think, that the director spit out yeah. on the floor. Ew. <laughs> Are you going to eat that? And uh, they, of course, like right at the beginning, they they uh, mention two people. Any questions? Oh, 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 do you think I'd look cute as a blonde? Why the cats purr? Who's chubbier, Perry Mason or Scotty on Star Trek? Uh, these are two deceased actors right now, so kids today watching would not know who the heck either one of these. Well, maybe Scotty from Star Scotty, Trek. I think they would know. Yeah. From... Well, not but the. You, Other cartoons. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, but Perry Mason, of course, was a. Uh, I mean, he was on back in the '60s, I believe, with his his original sh original show, Perry Mason. Then he was back on, I think, in the late '80s and early '90s, and uh, he was he was definitely a big guy. I I didn't I never watched the show myself. Uh, Kelly, how about you? Did you ever watch Perry Mason when he was? I think it was on NBC. I want to say. No, no, I um, I think my granny did. Yeah, exactly. It was, <laughs> it was definitely a show for the older set because they go. I remember when he was young and um, in black and white. Anyway, <laughs> then of course we're seeing uh, uh, Wacko on the way over to the studio doing Tai Chi moves mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, that of course I love that. That's so. <laughs> I, yeah, I love that scene. Just... I don't understand the point of it, but it looks great. <laughs> well, it was he was doing it on top of the cart. It was parroting Lance Johnson, who plays a character of, of Sam Bot Bottoms, who is doing the same moves on top of a boat in Apocalypse Now. Oh, now see that makes sense. See, 
There you go. Yeah, we ought to see the movie. So, I really uh, <laughs> should. It's one of those that I'm like, I can't believe it's, I haven't watched it. Yeah, it's on my now. list. Yeah, it's it's listed on many top 100 lists yeah. as like the movie that you need to. One of the movies you must see. You know. So. So yeah, and that scene where he's doing Tai Chi or whatever, they drive right past Acme Labs, or at least the uh, the scenery of it. Oh, you really? Could see, yeah. That's cool. Of, I uh, didn't even notice that. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, so it's like meta. Like, yeah, totally. Like where like, they film Pinky in the Brain. Yeah, this is where we film Pinky in the Brain. <laughs> um, oh, and they also drive past all the, the rides at the Universal Studios yes. tour. Mm-hmm. They go into that. <laughs> yeah, which is not on the Warner Brothers tour. Yeah, I'm like, why are they in Universal <laughs> Studios? <laughs> like, well, it's called, I think they called it the, the Universe, yeah, the Universe Studios, <laughs> or yeah, tour. So they can't say Universal but yeah, they go past King Kong, the an earthquake ride, and like a an old west kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh which yes, that's part of the well, at least in one incarnation or another. They changed them up uh in Universal Studios for many different reasons. Yeah, there was a fire. Yeah. yeah I was gonna say, usually the reason they close down stuff at Universal Studios Hollywood is because it burns down, unfortunately. Yeah. They used to have I remember it was such a bummer when the Back to the Future 2 set burned down and uh, it was in one fire. And then Did they had a separate fire about 10 years ago, I want to say, where the King Kong ride burned down. Like uh, Backdraft, that used to be there. Did that burn down? Because that would be ironic. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, just... I think Backdraft was after. No, unfor- no, Backdraft is up the hill. <laughs> okay. So it was not down in there. Because that would have been very ironic. Yes. But, but we've actually been, it, we mentioned this before, but Nathan and I have actually been on the real Warner Brothers studio mm-hmm. Tour and it did not have King Kong. <laughs> it did not have King Kong, or, or at least back then. I mean, this was like 15 years ago. I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. So it, back then, it didn't have. Of course, it doesn't have any rides, but it was much more of a you're on a real working set. And yeah. they uh, they drove us past George Clooney, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of any other stars I I remember off the top of my head. Uh, but you know, we got to see Boy the soldiers. friends. <laughs> Toy Soldiers. We got to see where they filmed Friends. Mm, we got yeah. to see Central oh, Perk cool. and uh and uh yeah. Nobody was, you know, making anything then, but we got to watch go into the empty studio. Yeah. So you know, I really suggest going and uh checking those out if you're in the LA area and you have like a uh, you know, an extra day uh for anybody out there to to check out some of the studio tours. Uh NBC has has one, I believe. We've gone on that a few times. Uh, mm, yeah. we've hung Salem. out. In, we hang out in uh, Salem Place, which I don't think is around anymore for the Days of Our Lives people. And uh, oh, I used to watch that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they used to. You know the little shopping center outside where they would always show them like uh, in Salem Place, and yeah, uh, that was a real like you could just you could actually order food. Yeah, you could eat there. And... You could eat in oh, Salem wow. Place. Yeah, it was just an outside thing, right out right outside by the gift shop with Salem Place. And, uh, yeah, we, my mom was a huge Days of Our Lives fan. And, uh, that's one of the only reasons we, we went to the NBC tour a lot. Yeah. That's why she's listening now. That's why I said, hi, mom. (laughs) No. (laughs) My mom used to watch it and, and I hadn't watched it in years and years since I was in school. And every so often I'd, I'd catch myself picking up an episode that she was watching and I'd be like, it's the same exact people and this, they're having the same exact storylines. Like nothing Mm -hmm. ever changes on this show. Every now and then I'll still like, you know, watch like 10 minutes of an episode just to see, oh, I remember him. What's going on with that character? And you don't feel like you've missed anything, do you? Yeah, I really don't. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. What was going on last time I saw them about five years ago? (laughs) The only thing that ever changes is like the kids grow up like 20 years over a year. Yes. Wait a minute. They were a baby last time I saw them. They usually go off for vacation or like, you know, they're like nine years old. They're like, okay, have fun at uh, camp. And then they come back and they're 20 Mm -hmm. and they have like... You know, all of a sudden relationship issues and yeah, like, I'm going to cool have friend. a kid <laughs> and that kid's going to be 20 next year. <laughs> it's very weird. But anyway, yes, check those tours out. The the people who were very panicky in this episode with about the, the horror, the mm-hmm. horror of the prices of the tour. That seems reasonable. Yeah, I looked at the price and go, 2750 is not that bad, actually. Yeah, I mean, oh, like. No, that's- good <laughs> i'll go on a tour of a studio for 2750 mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> uh but yes oh and i've saved up enough disney uh dvd points to go on the disneyland uh burbank tour which i'm totally excited about 
I, did. I bet that cost more than twenty seven fifty. Uh, probably. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So they mentioned a, a few other references here. They mentioned the amazing Kreskin. Uh, do you, have you ever seen or heard of the amazing Kreskin before, Kelly? I've heard of him. He's I, sort of like a, a magician or yeah. a fortune teller kind of thing. Yeah, he used to be, I think, on Johnny Carson a few times. Uh, again, a, a reference, I think people used to kind of say, who are you, the amazing Kreskin, a lot on, on mm -hmm. cartoons and TV shows a lot in the early 90s and late 80s when people actually knew who he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not um, a joke they would make now. No, not today. Uh, so I, I remember as a kid not even really knowing who the Amazing Kreskin was. I just had to ask my dad, like, who is he? And he's like, oh, he's on Johnny Carson a lot. <laughs> um, now, they, the Warners go to the studio. And right before they go into the studio, this crazy hippie guy comes out. And he's going, man... He's just talking like that. I had no mm -hmm. idea who that is, who that guy is. Uh, he's a parody of Dennis Hopper from Apocalypse Now. Freud Laven, Freud Laven, Freud Laven. Stop with the chanting. Bravo. Encore. Babu. Did you choreograph that? Oh, you should be very proud. Who are you that have come here, man? We're here to stop the director from making his movie. <laughs> stop him, man. Whoa, wrong, wrong. You know what he is, man? He's the thinker, the tinker, the plotter, the planner, the genius, man. What in France they don't know? He's king there, man. Comedy's his crown. He rules with funny words. Funny words like Freundleben. Ah! He doesn't have his ending, man. And you're going to stay in there till he finds his ending. And I had, I, I honestly was looking at him going, I don't know who this guy is supposed to be. He, he almost looked like Charles Manson to me. <laughs> and I, was like, I, I love him. That was a character. I, I, the guy has always entertained me so much. <laughs> yeah. He, his, his lines do really stand out as, um, <laughs> as some of the best in the, in the episode. Um, just the, he has spoken, spoken for in Laven is, is definitely one of mine. And then he talks like Yoda and we should let them. <laughs> <laughs> and we should let Did them. Did y'all catch that? Did you catch that? Cause I caught it. <laughs> I was there. I saw it. <laughs> Heard it. Nobody sees the director unless they know the password. Freund Laven. Freund Laven. Freund Laven. Freund Laven. Would it be Freund Laven? Whoa. They have spoken Freund Laven. Go in, we should let them. So, yeah, so yeah, no wonder you like him so much. Not only is he kind of just a yeah. funny guy, but he's talking like Yoda. Well, that and, and when uh, Dot asked him to let, let them out of the cagey, wagey, and he's yeah. like, you're working weirdness on me, man. You're, you're cute weirdness. You got this whole weird, cute thing going on. And <laughs> I like I, it. Yeah, he's like self aware of it, but still, he can't help but. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, and there's I don't know who those other people were. Uh, the I don't know those are assistant directors or whomever those other people were. writers of the show or so. Yeah, I yeah. thought they were the missing accountants. Oh, were oh those the missing accountants. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I I'm gonna go with that theory because well, you saw how they were dressed. They and they I mean they took their ties off and wrapped them around their heads. Yes, and, you know I mean? you can kind of see the remnants of of suits and ties. So I I figured they were the missing account. Gotcha. So these were the people that were probably sent originally to go tell the director that he's over budget and he needs to stop the film. And they and never returned. They never returned. They got sucked into the director's uh, genius because of course. Right, Laven. Right, Laven. <laughs> Well, he is a genius in France. Is, is the... He's the thinker, the tinker, the plotter, the planner, the genius, man. <laughs> well, this scene is very similar to uh, a scene from Apocalypse the way, Now. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, By the way, mm -hmm. I, I use that line to describe the best director ever sometimes. Steve oh, Spielberg. of course. Just, just letting you know that. That is a very accurate description of Steven Spielberg, yes. I think so. <laughs> well, this scene is actually very, very similar to... Uh, the scene from Apocalypse Now where Martin Sheen is trapped in a bamboo cage and Dennis Hopper is going up to him, uh, kind of giving him water from a, a like a one of those little gourds or something like that. And uh, he's he's just talking about how Marlon Brando's character, the general, is a genius. And he's mm. just, you know, there's something happening out here, man. You know something, man? I know something that you don't know. 
That's right, Jack. The man is clear in his mind, but his soul is mad. Oh, yeah. He's dying, I think. He hates all this. He hates it. But the man's, uh... He reads poetry out loud, all right? And a voice. A voice. He likes you because you're still alive. He's got plans for you. No, no. I'm not going to help you. You're going to help him, man. You're going to help him. I mean, what are they going to say, man, when he's gone, huh? Because he dies when it dies, man. When it dies, he dies. What are they going to say about him? What are they going to say? He was a kind man. He was a wise man. He had plans. He had wisdom. Am I going to be the one that's going to set them straight? Look at me wrong. It was really cool to see the similarities between those two characters. The movie itself is called The Wretched Clown. Mm. Um, this is a connection to one of Jerry Lewis's films, which he has shut away until, I believe, after he dies. He does not want anyone to see uh, this movie. It's called The Day the Clown Cried. No, some of it's been released, right? Yeah, like- it was like some of it, I, I it was uh, kind of leaked, kind of, sort of, mm-hmm. recently. Um, it, I think it's a foreign version of the film. Okay. Um everyone thought it was just this horrible movie because it was, I believe over budget. Mm. And most importantly, a film that has a very weird (laughs) premise where Jerry Lewis, who directed the movie is dressed like a clown and he entertains uh, children who are being led to the gas chambers in uh, the Holocaust. Mm. So that right there, the concept itself sounds very dark and not funny at all. Not funny, ha ha. Not funny, ha ha, or ho ho, or uh uh-oh, even. Yeah. (laughs) So that right there, um, I've never seen Life is Beautiful, but that to me kind of... Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah. No, that's a wonderful film. Yeah. See, that's that's the movie that gets it done right. And then perhaps Jerry Lewis just couldn't really get the concept down right. I don't know. Well, because it doesn't make it funny, but it, you know, the the father, the character, um, you know, it shows him trying to make the most of, of, uh, you know, really terrible situation and, mm-hmm. and trying to keep his son upbeat and and um, so it's it's really it's touching and poignant and um, and it, you know the beginning of it's it, it's great. It kind of got a little bit of love story in there, and, and yeah. um, I mean, it's all in Italian, so you have to read the subtitles. Yep. But uh, yeah. it's funny too. I mean, for where yeah. when it is funny, it's funny, and then when it's sad, it's sad. You know, they do a good job of yeah, yeah. Because he he falls in love with this woman, and he calls her Principessa, <laughs> you know, princess, and you know, he's just trying to woo her, and it's just it's cute. It's 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 cute for what it is, and um, but it's definitely really heart-wrenching at the same time yeah i remember roberto benini won the oscar and he's just like <laughs> jumping on top of people that was like one of the best oscar exception yeah except i, I think speeches. that was the year saving private right or uh, spielberg won best yes. director saving private Ryan. it too. was i know ah, you, see? there you go oh yeah then it, back around. There it goes. <laughs> well when we first get into see the director he's talking about ooey gooey <laughs> and he's shot in shadows um and he's bald. <laughs> yeah, he's shaved his head since last time, and he's gained a lot of weight. Gained a lot of weight. And this is in reference to Marlon Brando's character in Apocalypse Now. Marlon Brando wanted to be shot in shadows, in in kind of like darkness. Um, and I was watching some of the film last night when Marlon Brando was speaking. And yeah, it's just showing him like in and out of the light. It's really kind of trippy watching him. And uh, Francis Ford Coppola was very upset when he saw that Marlon Brando came to the set very overweight. He gained mm-hmm. a lot of weight. And uh, Marlon Brando, I guess, and, and Francis Ford Coppola did not get along together, uh, which is kind of surprising because um, they had previously worked together on The Godfather. Um, but I guess just Marlon Brando was very 
very hard to work with uh, in Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now, just like this movie with the director, went way over budget, way over time. Uh, I think it was originally scheduled to be just a few weeks uh, but it, it, yeah, it says, according to IMB, IMB, let's try this again, IMDB Thanks. trivia, 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 <laughs> <laughs> shooting was originally a schedule for just six weeks, but in the end, it took 16 months to film this movie. Wow. And Francis Ford Coppola was going crazy. He had, he threatened suicide multiple times. Uh, there's just a, a lot of crazy stuff. He lost ton the Francis Ford Coppola, like t lost tons of weight. Um, there's actually a movie called hearts of darkness, which is a documentary about the making of apocalypse. Now that was released in 1991. So it seems like some of this particular cartoon is not just reference to apocalypse now, but in reference to that movie, that documentary that hmm. came out just a couple years before this cartoon. So, again, <laughs> this is kind of a blend of many different references yeah. all around the place for just this very short seven, eight minute cartoon. <laughs> I know. I wish it was longer. It, was like... <laughs> it really did seem like they could have gone a little bit further with it. I could have right? watched 30 minutes of it, I think. Just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, of course, at the very end, the, the director is having trouble. If he can't find the ending, he won't stop until they find the ending. So <laughs> the Warners help him with that, with the giant mallet and squish him. And he says, the hurting, the hurting. <laughs> uh, and that wraps it up. Well, that's our in-depth kind of yeah. thing. But let's go into your favorite moments. Uh, let's start with you, Nathan. What were some of your favorite lines, um, favorite moments of this? Cartoon? I love the song that the uh, the Doors basically uh, parody of. <laughs> yeah. Which was also, that's a, also an Apocalypse <clears throat> Now kind of reference, right? That's at the beginning yes. and ending of Apocalypse Now. Yeah, and the, in the beginning of Apocalypse Now, it starts off with, uh, this is the end you know that uh that door song mm, i'm not gonna sing the it end but yeah yeah they play at the beginning of the movie and the end of the movie yeah, but it's just funny this is the beginning the beginning of our and then the <clears throat> middle and yeah it's as soon as that song plays i'm like I, my my memories go back to young young in days <laughs> when you when it was everyone was cool listening to the doors well, i guess i was just remember this episode so. oh this episode <laughs> In particular, <laughs> I would just remember like listening to the greatest hits albums of the Doors, which I know the Doors are. If you buy a greatest hits album, that's for housewives and little girls. Mm. Which, if you know what the reference that is to, no, no, Kids no. in the Hall. No, never mind. Uh, I think I remember that now. <laughs> um, All I know from Kids in the Hall is I crush your head. <laughs> yeah, I squish you. I squish you. <laughs> Bruce McCullough had this character that was like a, a big Doors fan, and he was like. Greatest hits albums are for housewives and little girls. Uh, anyway, but it kind of the Jim Morrison voice sounded a lot like uh, Perry Coma to me, actually. Especially, 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 I'm having trouble talking this evening, especially at the end where he's like, "The ending, the ending, the <laughs> ending." You got, I guess, the yeah, <laughs> the ending. good. Uh, you got stuck on his record right there in his brain, but uh, that was cool. But, um. <clears throat> Kelly, what about you? Oh, I I just I pretty much loved all of it, but <laughs> uh, I really did like the the, the foreign living guys and, uh -huh. and the cute weirdness. And I saw a snail slithering across the railroad track. Ooey gooey was his name. <laughs> oh, oh, and I haven't mentioned this. I mentioned it before we started recording it, but yes. <laughs> when uh, they sort of like appear and then move really quick and. Help! How'd you with the going? You were there, but here now you are for me to see. How'd you do? You understand any of that? I think he said. How you? How'd you with the going? You were there, but here now you are for me to see. How'd you do? Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I love that line. Um, that's definitely that's definitely one of my favorite <laughs> lines in this. Um, that along, I think Wacko is incredibly funny in this this episode. Yeah, actually, he was very good. Um, but uh, that particular one made me really laugh out loud. And then I showed the episode again at my school today at lunch, and uh, one of the kids was just watching it, and she's watching it next to me. Wacko says that, and she just starts laughing, and she goes, "Those kids are funny." <laughs> 
<laughs> these kids. Those kid those those Warner kids. I just But like... what's so great about the episode is um that you can enjoy it with zero context as to what it's a parody of totally of a parody or you know of a story and um or it's a it's a parody of a movie that's based on a book right loosely yes yeah. exactly or, or a parody of the making of a movie of a, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> either way either way you can totally go through this cartoon as a kid and just say okay it's it's a funny cartoon and just oh, leave yeah. it at that yeah but um but it, but that's what really I think sets this episode uh, apart from from some of the other Animaniacs episodes is that it's enjoyable on multiple levels. Um, I, I really think it's one of the cleverest. Yes, it's, it's mm -hmm. really really you know, like you said, you can enjoy it on multiple levels, and it's it's just really clever and and hits all the right notes. And and again, kind of daring. I think we talked about this before. Um, how. I think Paul Rugg has done this many a few times in in previous episodes that he's written, where he writes it at, not to kids necessarily, but mm. to adults who just have a kid's sense of humor. Um, then that way it hits both of them because, um, and I I do remember watching this a little bit, and my dad kind of look. You know, it's it's one of those situations where I I remember my dad walking in and going, "Oh, it's that's a parody of this." And I'm going, huh? Like, I don't know what I you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about that. But I mean, he would do that often with Animaniacs. I mean, we were talking to Maurice LaMarche when we met him and saying how uh, my dad came in and said, oh, the, the brain, that's hilarious. That's a, a parody of Orson Welles. And I'm saying, who's Orson Welles? <laughs> What's that? Guy? Who I'm just... <laughs> are you, sir? <laughs> but uh, I, it's just cool to see those things. So, yes, a, an episode... Definitely one of the classics, uh, and I much more enjoyable, I think, for me, even now as an adult than when I was a kid. I think I don't yeah. know, I just because I think I, I I I see those references more and I can appreciate them more. So, well, with that, I think we're ready to move on to segment two. This is Maurice LaMarche, the voice of Squid the Pigeon from The Good Feathers and Animaniacs. And you're listening to the Animaniacast. Don't hit me, pesto! And our second segment is called The Boyds. The Boyds was written by Deanna Oliver and directed by Michael Gerard. And Nathan... What basically happens here in the Boyds? So we're following the Boyds, the pigeons, and they're going to be in the movie The Boyds, which is perfect because they are Boyds. <laughs> Lousy, stinking Boyds. D disgusting Boyds. He keeps Boyds. Dirty, disgusting, filthy, lice-ridden Boyds. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're, they're Boyds. They're going to be in the movie, which is a, a reference... Uh, uh, kind of a takeoff of the birds from Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, there's stunt doubles for birds, and they get hurt a lot in this episode. Yes. Being the stunt doubles, you know, that's going to happen. Um, and we get to see lots of scenes from the birds, the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's a fun little movie. In the end, they decide they had their 15 minutes of fame, and now they're out, basically. They're one day in the spotlight's enough. Yes. Uh well, what did you guys think about this particular cartoon? This the 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 Boyds. What do we think? Like it? Um, I saw the birds, so I liked all the uh, scenes that I was like, oh, I remember that scene in the birds. Yeah, it yeah. did pick up a lot of key scenes from the movie. Uh, I can't really remember the last time I have seen the birds. It was definitely one of those. It was definitely definitely one of those times <laughs> where uh, I was probably flipping channels and it was on Turner Classic Movies. I'm assuming. And uh -huh. uh, I just sat down to watch it because I heard so much about it. And I remember <laughs> not being that scared. I believe mm -hmm. Alfred Hitchcock had a huge uh, fear of birds. There's there's certain things that, you know, in college that you, you know, college professors who, who are cinephiles uh, mm -hmm. will talk to us and say, Alfred Hitchcock had these particular themes in all of his movies. You know, the police are uh, inept. Uh, the women are in trouble and usually blonde mm -hmm. <laughs> and some things like birds, like Alfred Hitchcock apparently had a huge fear of birds. 
And uh, so this is why uh, he chose this subject. Um, Kelly, any any particular moments that you liked of this cartoon? I I just liked it overall. I um, it's been a long time since I have seen the the birds, but uh, as as we've already said, it does seem to uh, recall several scenes in in the movie. And you know, I kind of like the way they they animated Tippy Hedren and. You know, it's one of like it's one of like the real more more accurate depictions they've had of a of a real person on the show. Yeah, um, it's not too much of a caricature, I don't think. And um, uh, I I just I liked the the costumes that the good pigeons or the good <laughs> feathers were in. Yes, because they were just so ridiculous looking. And, yes. Um, and I realized once the episode ended, it kind of reminded me a little bit. I was a an extra for one day in um, Hunger Games: Catching Fire. Oh, cool! Mm. And um, I kind of felt like the same as they did. It's like, okay, yeah, that was that was fun. One day, that that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Have my day in the spotlight, and I'm good to go. <laughs> Are you able to point out yourself, like in the movie? I I can. Um, I was actually in three scenes, but you you can only see me very slightly in one. It's a crowd shot, and somebody moves slightly to the side uh -huh. and you see just my head because uh, i'm very short and yes. so I, I and i can only see it when i slow motion <laughs> the, the 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 dvd blu-ray whatever so um but i i, I was in a, a place where i could have i could have should have been seen very prominently because i'm sitting right behind uh sam claflin who's um uh, finnick i'm sitting right behind him as he gets uh uh reaped uh -huh. uh, with his name drawn and everything. And there's actually a whole bunch of people that were on stage when they filmed that scene, but they really only used a close up of his face. There's oh. other guys standing around him. We're, we're sitting behind him. And uh, they, it's like they spent half a morning filming that and they used maybe two seconds. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, the, I, I could definitely see how that could be frustrating, especially as an extra. Uh, mm -hmm. I know it's, it's frustrating for me just working with middle school kids, having them, <laughs> when we're trying to film things, because we do a lot of film editing in our class and our drama class and and even for just, you know, just projects in general and getting kids to understand that you need multiple shots of things mm -hmm. and keep it tight. And it, it, their kids today don't want to do that. They're like, no, I want to get one and done and that's it. And then we move on to the next one. <laughs> it's like, wow, no, we we should not do that because X, Y, and Z uh, did the now when this in the in the film did you actually take the time to say to yourself like okay this is my character and this is who i'm playing or were you just like i'm just in the background and doing my thing i just i tried to you know kind of react or do what i thought uh -huh. my character should do which is basically <laughs> i was a member of uh, one of the districts and so I, I tried to look fearful when i felt like i should and i tried to look serious when i thought i should but no they didn't even really give me any kind of direction it did you give yourself like, okay, stand here hmm? did you give yourself like a name or something you know like no oh. I <laughs> yeah i think you should do some fan fiction yeah exactly <laughs> I, I have done fan fiction um but not for hunger games oh, oh. Well, th let's go ahead and talk about some of the other things in here. Do we were talking about Norman right here in the, in the Boyds. Uh, did you guys catch that right there, Norman? Yes. Who that? Is? I'm, no, really, no. Yes. Okay, Norman. tell them, Kelly. Who's who's Norman? Psycho. Psycho. Ah, uh, see, I've never seen Psycho. You never seen Psycho? Yeah, that's the one I've never seen. Which is another. You've seen the birds, but you have not seen Psycho. Yeah, and I was frightened by the birds. That one's even been remade, and there's been a TV yeah, show. Yeah, and... but I heard the remake wasn't as good as the original. It never is. No. See? So then I was like, well, I guess. And there's also sequels to Psycho as well, which I've seen at least Psycho 2, I believe, which was horrible. Horrible <laughs> movie. I think I saw the it with... Horror. The horror. The horror. <laughs> I saw it with Rift Tracks, though, so it wasn't oh, that, that was... bad. Oh. And, and speaking of riff tracks, there's a great riff tracks that I would connect with this. Nathan, do you know what I'm thinking of? N oh, Birdemic. Birdemic. Of course. Birdemic, which is one of the all time best, uh, horrible recent <laughs> kind of rip offs of no. the, of the, of the yeah, birds. Bad. I saw a sci fi original movie or a Siffy, as sometimes we call it. <laughs> Siffy original movie of, um, I, I guess it was called Caw. Uh -huh. I think it was about um, 
Crows or something. But the only reason I watched that was because Sean Patrick Flannery was in it. And I, you know, young Indiana Jones. Oh, yes. So I, I, I've seen like everything he's in and it's, most of it's really bad. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, got to see you got to see Birdemic as well, especially with riff tracks. Yeah, because uh, they're it's just it, I still quote the movie or at least the riffs <laughs> with my wife constantly. Um, there's another reference here to The Shining. Did you guys catch it? I did not. No, I missed that one. OK, so in the, the scene where uh, Pesto and uh, the crow, which is a very like Jack Nicholson uh, in, in impersonation. Are you laughing at me? Are you laughing at me? Yeah, I'm laughing at you because you're the victim of self-delusion. And I think it's funny. See if you think this is funny, you big wing ding. Here comes Johnny! He throws the crow down and the crow's head goes through the door, just like Jack Nicholson did in The Shining. And I thought that was cool. I can see that now. All right. Yeah. When he said, here comes Johnny, I was wondering if it was. Yes. Yeah. So that that was a neat little reference. It was and it was cool to see like a, some Jack Nicholson stuff going on. Who was a, you know, up and coming star at the time in the 60s, like in Little Shop of Horrors and stuff like that. Uh, that with that, I think I mean, that right there, cool send ups to the birds. Yeah. Um. Again, nice to see. Like before and after, especially if you know the scenes that they're talking about, like going through the chimney, mm -hmm. uh, landing on the, the jungle gym kind of behind Tippy Hendren and crashing to... into the phone booth. Yeah, that was really cool. That's a really powerful scene in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, I kept thinking to myself when I was watching the Good Feathers here, like, I wonder how many times in the actual movie, the birds, the I, I think they did have some robotic birds. I'm pretty sure they did. Um, but how many birds actually might have been hurt or killed? Yeah, I know. I was thinking that I was getting kind of sad. I was like, oh, all these. Yeah, because you're watching The Good Feathers. You're like, yeah, it's a, just a cartoon. But at the same time, you're like, well, back in the 60s, did they really use did... stump birds? I mean, they didn't use stump birds. But so like, what did they do? Is it... uh... Ho hopefully they didn't run over birds at the end. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think that's a. <laughs> Which was a very painful moment. It's just like I was watching with my wife last night and she just says, and they're dead because <laughs> it didn't look like they would. Like, and they just kind of parked on top they of just them parked too. and just sat there for yeah. a moment. I was like, oh, it's not like a quick like <laughs> it was much more than just a cartoon flattening for them this mm -hmm. episode. So, yes, I could see why the the good feathers gave up show business. <laughs> uh, so I think it's. That's about it for this episode, right? Is there any yeah. other things? I mean, they had the uh, taxi driver references again and yes. stuff like that. Um, Whenever Bobby's around, you're yeah. always going to get that. You talking to me or am mm -hmm. I am I talking to me? As yeah. he was saying <laughs> this one after getting pummeled a few times. Exactly. It's uh, But they didn't have the um, that's it again. I keep <laughs> missing those. I did. I did like the part with this one where he just kicks. <laughs> he just kicks him. A star's got to put up with stuff like this all the time. Hey, Bobby knows this industry. <laughs> hey, what I do? Nothing. I just felt like whacking something. Yeah, I like that too. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't need a reason to. <laughs> yeah, just knock him over. Uh, so good stuff uh, with them. Um, I think we're ready to go to our water tower rating. <laughs> Nathan. Oh, boy. Let's start with you. How many water towers out of five would mm. you give this episode of Animaniacs? Uh, I just, I wish I liked the episode <laughs> a little bit. No, I, I, I'll go with five. The, I mean, I would want the Boyds to be shorter and Hearts of Darkness to be longer. But I, I mean, I enjoyed them both. So I, I you know, I can't. I can't say anything bad enough to make it a four and a half, so I'm going to say five. There you go. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go with five as well. I'm saying five stars. Five water towers, I mean. Oh, we did high five. Well, we had our fives and we just smashed them together. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kelly, I'm I'm in anticipation. What are you going to give this episode? 
I gotta give it five too. It's one of my all time favorites. Yay! Woo! We gave five. it triple fives. Triple fives. Triple fives. <laughs> First time on the podcast. Oh, wow. All fives. We were in total agreement. Highest so far. I feel far. like there should be like flashing lights. I know. And yeah, loud we did noises. It. And, is... Oh, and confetti. Don't we worry. Can... I'm putting them in right now. Oh, excuse In post production. <gasps> whoa, whoa. Oh, I love it. You can't hear the. Listen oh, to all that. We stuff. did it. We don't have you to do. You get a five, and you get a five. <laughs> it's exciting. We don't have to do any more episodes now because okay. we did it. We no, but, but watch this and stop. There you go. See that oh. cool? I just made the sound stop like that and mm. post. Oh, the magic of post production. So we'll anyway, do some more episodes then. <laughs> what were you saying, Kelly? House field bearing. House field bearing. Okay. Well. Let's go ahead and get to our Twitter poll results from last week. Hello again, it's your friendly announcer with your Animaniacast Twitter poll results. I'm speaking to you live from Pencott Palace's um, sauna, I believe. Uh, this is a, It must be a sauna. It's really hot, and uh, there's lots of uh, interesting people around here, including this gentleman over here. What were you saying, sir? Kalima! Kalima! Call my ma. All right, I will call her as soon as I am done with this, sir. Thank you very much. Now then, listeners were asked, which of these Pinky the Brain cartoons is your favorite? Hashtag Animaniacs. Hashtag Animaniacast Bowl. With 8%, people said, we're rodents dare. 23% said it was win big. 27% said it was battle for the planet. But the winner of today's poll was Pavlov Mice, which got 42% of the vote. Well, there you are. And uh, I think it's about time for me to leave. They're trying to give me some sort of fruit punch. No, thank you. I'm not thirsty. Thank you very much. Huh? All right, back to the studio. Well, which of those four Pinky the Brain episodes, cartoons, I should say, do you like the most? Kelly, let's start with you. Who, what do you which one of those do you like the most? I like Win Big because it's the, the Jeopardy parody and I love Brain and his little outfit that he wears and it's just funny and cute. I'm going to totally agree with you for exactly those reasons right there. It was the first time we really got to see Pinky and the Brain in action and I love that suit. I just, <laughs> and I just, everything about it. It's, it's, it's an episode that was shown a lot. Um, and I, it's one of my favorites. Uh, mm -hmm. Nathan, what about you? I'm also in agreement. Triple agreement again. Oh my yeah. gosh. Woo! Uh, yeah, no, I love the Jeopardy scene and mostly that suit is just hilarious. He gets in that taxi cab and the taxi driver doesn't even seem to care. That and he gets keep, he, he, he um, the host ca keeps calling him Br Brian. Brian, yes. yeah. Brian. <laughs> it's Brain. <laughs> okay, with that, it's time for our Twitter poll question for this week. And Nathan, you have it written down over I there. I have it written down. So I'm going to have you go for the question. What is this week's question? Uh, I can't read my handwriting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so this one is the best cold open. So today we had the Alfred Hitchcock opening. Yes. So that's where they there. say Flumiel. Flumiel. Uh Also, we can choose uh, to uh, do the Gilligan's theme, the Warner Brothers theme song, basically. Yeah. Put the seeds up in the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Flipper theme song. Yes. Kind of thing. And then also the infamous newsreel of the stars. And if you vote for that, you just <laughs> you're voting to hate me. So just it's Aww. on there. But, you know, just. We're just going to prove that no one likes it once and for all. I'm not alone. <laughs> Nathan wants that to be zero percent. Zero percent, preferably. So, <laughs> yeah, so very cool. So go on over to, anim uh, sorry, go on over to twitter.com slash animaniacast or just simply search on Twitter for hashtag animaniacast poll and you should see that poll pop right up and you can vote on it and then make your voice heard. See which cold opening is the best. Well, that's a really cool Twitter poll question, but right now we have some 
f f f feedback feedback oh boy yeah that's right we have a uh, another review on itunes here um so i'll read this it says uh the title is uh in my opinion the animani cast is a pod and then my my phone doesn't go any further <laughs> um this was by mike westfall um and then his uh comment is hey did i do it right <laughs> And I'm going to say no, because I couldn't read your, your this title, but actually, uh, you are entered into the contest, so I don't... Yes. So there we go. Uh, I think on my iPhone 6 Plus, it does say, in my opinion, the Animaniacast is a podcast. Oh, okay. Good. That's even better. Then you definitely did it right. Good job, Mike. Well, send in all those reviews to iTunes. Uh, it's relatively easy i know it's kind of a pain folks because not everyone uses itunes for their podcast stuff i personally don't even but it is important to leave those reviews for podcasts like this one if you do enjoy it because it helps show the podcast to other people who would uh, possibly like it as well helps give us more visibility and uh, so they'll enjoy it too and it makes us feel good yeah <laughs> plus you're entered in the contest for a bunch of decals Pinky and the Brain decals, the Warner Siblings decals, and a decal that says, put a brain in the White House. So go on over to iTunes and find the Animated Cast. Leave a quick review. We do appreciate it so much. Let's go ahead and go over to contact information. Oh so let's go ahead and start with Nathan this time. Nathan, where can people go with you? They want to say hi to you. Well, last week we talked about it. Um, I decided to paint my uh, my Boba Fett. So mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be, I'm going to add some blue to it. So I'll show you after the show. Okay. But it'll be, so I'm back to Django FT at Twitter. So. Okay, Django FT. I'm looking forward to seeing that, uh, that yeah, little we'll chalice. We'll talk about it next week. Okay, okay. And uh, Kelly, what about you? You can reach me, Kelly, at Big Shiny Robot or Yoda Princess, Y O D A P R N C S S, on Twitter. Very cool. And uh, of course, the Animated Cast, you can get in contact with us at twitter.com slash Cast. We're also on Facebook. And of course, retrozap.com slash Cast where you can see not only this episode's show notes, but previous episodes and show notes for those episodes as well. And heck, while you're searching around on RetroZap, go ahead and check out all the different podcasts that we got on there and all the awesome articles as well. Well, with that, it's time to go. So on behalf of the Anime Cast with Nathan and Kelly, it's Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night. Everybody. Good night. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds of the Animaniacs characters or any other Animaniacs-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Warner Brothers, Amblin Entertainment, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated. That's the ending, the ending of our story. The ending, that's the ending, the ending, that's the ending, the ending, the ending, the ending. The ending.